one of my teachers, my English teacher was like, I think you might be dyslexic. Like you just, in this written essay, you, and I was a junior, like it's like you spelt this word like three different ways in this one mm -hmm. essay. I never really felt like I belonged in where I grew up. I did never really felt like I connected to people. I always sort of felt like a little bit more mature than some of my friends. And then I was leaving school and going on, on auditions. I was doing writing sessions, like learning, you know, writing songs like three times a week. And I felt like I had these two separate identities and that show just kind of forced me to like pick. Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Ezzy. Hey, what's up? <laughs> So you're born in Long Island? Born in Long Island. Well, technically, I guess Queens. And I lived in Queens till I was five, and then I moved to Long Island. Mm -hmm. And your parents are originally from Russia? Yeah. Yeah, both my parents are from Moscow. And then my dad came to the US in the 80s, and then my mom came in the 90s. What did they move here for? What was it like? I mean, they just wanted to get out of like Russia. Mm -hmm. um, but. They, my dad is a classical violinist and he's like a violin teacher too. And he, I think that was like his ticket out. That was like, you know, he wanted to, I think he originally wanted to like tour and travel oh. with orchestras and then he found himself into t teaching and then he taught at Manhattan School of Music for like a really, really long time and like trained, like competitively trained kids in violin. And my mom, um, she just, wanted to get out of Russia mm -hmm. and come to America. Like, what did she do or did before? Uh, my mom is a nurse. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So were you, was it a lot of classical music when you were growing up, right? Yeah. It's so weird because I think about like all these kids talking about how, or like my friends saying how like, oh yeah, when I was a kid, my parents would play like this kind of music or that kind of music. And I, I actually think I missed out on a lot of modern music because mm -hmm. My dad was always teaching from home, Yeah. so I couldn't blast music. My parents weren't playing music. My dad was always teaching, so I would always just hear classical music. Like I could probably sing certain pieces by heart just because like, I know exactly what they sound like. Wow. I've heard them like a million times over the years, just with different students. Mm -hmm. Did he teach you as well? He tried. Yeah. It's just really hard to like learn a classical instrument from your parent, I think. It's such a, you have to be so structured in how you learn a classical instrument and me and my dad like didn't have that relationship like he'd try to teach me and then I'd be like I don't agree and then he'd be like I'm not doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But do you like classical music or? Yeah. yeah, I love classical music. Do you, but do you do any instruments? I kind of, I, I played violin. I actually did play violin for like on and off throughout my childhood. And I got really good at it, like when I actually practiced. I've just never been very disciplined in terms of like learning instruments. So I would just pick up guitar and then piano and teach myself that. So I guess I play violin, piano, and guitar, but like not seriously. Mm -hmm. It's more like for myself. It's how I get like ideas down. Yeah. I'm gonna learn though. I've been taking guitar lessons, trying to get better, and then also with piano, I want to like learn more about the theory. Mm -hmm. How do you describe yourself back then growing up? I'm realizing now I was actually like kind of like straight edge. Like I was actually very much a nerd. Like I I think I just I always had like a part of me that I think I didn't really let people see when I was younger that I'm now just like starting to be more open about because like my craft, like my music and my art is like forcing me to open up and like dig and actually figure out who I am. But when I was younger, I think I like, I was just always obsessed with the idea of like not fucking up. I'm still obsessed with that idea. But I was like, a, I was a really good kid. Like mm -hmm. I never, I would, or I would like sneak out, but nobody would know. Like I would, yeah, I was also very hardworking and like. So you did really well in school? No. Oh. No, I didn't. <laughs> Super dyslexic. I didn't know I was dyslexic till I was a junior in high school. But like, I always was horrible at spelling like writing stuff out on paper by hand has always been like so difficult for me um but I always managed to do okay in school because I like loved learning but I could never finish a test on time and I didn't I just I did, really didn't put two and two together until like one of my teachers my English teacher was like I think you might be dyslexic like you just 
in this written essay, you sp and I was a junior, like, it's like you spelt this word like three different ways in this one mm -hmm. essay. I'm like, yeah, like, I feel like I just didn't realize, but I would always think it was me, like, I couldn't finish a test on time, but like, I actually, there was like a reason for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Did you know from the onset that you wanted to be in music? Kind of. I always wanted to be like an entertainer. When I was little, I always wanted to act. Like that's all I wanted. Yeah, and you I, got, were you like signed when you were 15 or you had like a team, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did everything myself. Like my parents have, they still have no idea like what's happening <laughs> in my career, like since I was really young and like they. I just always, I think I was just always very discontent. Like, I never really felt like I belonged in where I grew up. I did never really felt like I connected to people. I always sort of felt like a little bit more mature than some of my friends. And I wasn't around too many creatives. And I just wanted to get out of that space. So, like, I would just spend hours, like, scouring online, like, about auditions and learning what it meant to, like, get an acting agent. I was, like, a, probably 11. I like convinced my sister to take my headshots. Like Whoa. I was just really obsessed. Like I, I would just get obsessed with something and like I wouldn't stop until I like knew everything about it. And then that's how. Um, and then one of my friends in middle school, he knew this acting teacher, um, in like a local acting teacher, and he introduced us. And I started taking like classes, and then I got an agent, and then I started going out on auditions. So that was just another excuse for me just to check out of school too, because I was like, fuck this, like, I'm going on real auditions, like, I'm booking commercials, I'm making money. Um, and then that's actually how I got my foot in the door, like, making music professionally, because I didn't know that I could do that, I was just mm. writing songs on my own. So you were going to these auditions, like, after school, or how were you juggling it? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Cause I was, I was a really, I was really stressed out. Like looking back, I, I, I just didn't, I would just cut ninth period, sometimes eighth period. And then like when I was a little older, I'd like change my schedule. So I'd have like gym class for like my lunch period, ninth period. So I could miss like kind of leave school earlier without it affecting me too much. Mm -hmm. What did but, your, yeah. It was, it was actually pretty <laughs> stressful. I kind of felt like I was balancing two different li lives like when I was in school and then acting. What did your parents think of you like doing all these auditions? Like were they aware? I mean you must have been making money from the commercials and stuff. Yeah, right? they were they didn't it's weird, they just didn't really like they just didn't tell me no. And if they did I'd be like too bad, like I don't know, they they were, they just kinda let me do my thing as long as I didn't like again, like I was a very obedient kid and like a very good kid, so like I would have a, I would kind of, they, I don't know, like I'd flip it and like explain it in a way to them that like made a lot of sense of why I had to do it, <laughs> I guess. They just worked a lot too, so like they would drop me off to these sets, and it's kind of illegal now that I think about it, but they like, because oh, yeah. I was a minor, so I would get them to sign the contracts, <laughs> like basically like per granting me permission to like do this project, and then they would just leave. And I'd be on set by myself. Oh my gosh. Yeah, now that I think about it, I'm like, this, that was not normal, like, at <laughs> all. And how did you get the Nickelodeon show? That was... The Nickelodeon show actually happened when I was... I'm 23 now. I was mm -hmm. 20, so I was, in, I was in college, and I just auditioned for it, and I booked it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so my parents would just, like sign the waivers and then I would just be on set by myself. What, what did you learn from being on the show? I learned a lot because I also I was I learned a lot about like acting and like what I wanted out of being like a artist and creative person I learned that acting is very much like a service industry mm -hmm. that you are hired because you fit somebody else's vision and like you actually don't have that much autonomy over your work and um, I also grew up a lot like I got to I dropped out of school even though I was already gonna drop out of school to do music but then that, that show just gave me an excuse um, and then yeah it, it, it just kind of forced me to like I think up until that show I was balancing two different lives I was balancing like I was in school studying communication something that I would never end up using in my life and like in college. in college and I was like, 
pleasing like my parents and like sort of like like filling that like conventional side of myself that I always felt the pressure I needed to like live up to and then I was leaving school and going on on auditions I was doing writing sessions like learning you know writing songs like three times a week and I felt like I had these two separate identities and that show just kind of forced me to like pick and dropping out of school and like actually committing to that was probably one of the coolest things that mm -hmm. that experience did for Where were you me. going? I went to Pace. Oh, okay. Yeah, in New York. Why did you decide not to study music? Or like, why did you want to do com? Um, I just didn't really feel like I needed to learn it in college. Like, I guess throughout like my, when I was younger, I, I learned how to act outside of school. I was already working professionally. And with music, like, I I didn't really know what what I was doing. I was just like I just decided I wanted to be a songwriter because I got to be in the studio when I was younger and like record a couple of songs and I realized that I could make a career out of it. I don't know. I I I've never been like the kind of person who learns in a very conventional way. So I guess I didn't really think about school being the place that I would learn to be creative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most communications kind of a backup plan though if like arts didn't work It was out. like a backup plan but also like completely not a backup plan because I was never going to end up using it. I think, <laughs> I, I think I was just like, I'm, an, I'm first generation American, like my parents are immigrants and like I'm sure, I don't know like if you could relate to this but like when your parents come to a country with like nothing, the pressure is so high and like they're constantly paranoid, especially doing something in the arts like... Mm -hmm. I was never told, like, no one was ever like, you know what, commit to that, like, full, just go for it, like, you'll be good, like, no, like, they're going to constantly give me, like, the worst case scenario, and I think that was me, like, listening with, like, one ear open, and, like, being like, okay, okay, yeah, I'm in school, I'm in school, and then I just, I couldn't, like, keep that up anymore. Was your dad more supportive of you doing music, or does he know that it's a bit of a struggle, because he did too, that he didn't want you to go into the same career path? My dad, like, I think they're just, they, they care more about, like, me being able to support myself and take care of myself, and they realize how difficult being in entertainment is, and I think, like, they didn't really believe, like, they didn't fully understand, like, what was happening, because they, it all just sounds like lofty ideas, like, I'm gonna book a TV show, and I'm gonna be like, and I'm gonna totally like be super successful, and then I'm gonna put on an album, and I'm gonna blow up, and like, like they just hear that, they're like, okay, all right, go to school. Like, <laughs> and I think the show opened my parents' eyes a lot because they're like, oh wow, like it worked, like here you are doing it on like a real scale. And then once music started really picking up, and like. I got in real sessions and like my work started to really come together and I could show them like what I've actually been working on they started to understand like it was a real thing it wasn't just me dreaming about these things and talking about it yeah and then how did the Steve Madden come about so the Steve Madden thing happened because so it's kind of a long story so I had been recording songs and writing songs all throughout like since I was like 17, like 18. I'm like, that's when I actually started to like write demos. I, I was thinking way more about just being like a songwriter. And then um, I had met my manager and it's such a long, I feel like it's such a long story. Like I don't need, basically, okay, this is what happened. I, I had just come back from Toronto. I shot the show. I had all these songs that I recorded um, prior to the show and like and like in my downtime and songs that I'd written and somebody that I worked with super randomly decided to ask like invited me to see a concert and it was a Steve Madden music show like the brand used to put on these concerts in Brooklyn and I went and he happened to be there and I was in the green room and I met him for like a split second he didn't remember who I was he didn't care but that just stayed with me and then a month later I was I was living in New York at the time I went to the Steve Madden store in Soho and I was trying on sneakers and he happened to be there oh, and he wow. just started talking to me about the shoes and I like it was 
it was actually like a very weird experience in my mind I'm like holy shit is this actually happening mm. like I was like no I met you That's before crazy. I'm an artist like I have music <laughs> I had kind of heard that he was starting a label like through the grapevine so I like made sure to you know let him know that I wasn't signed and we started talking and then he gave me his email and he like put me in touch with his people and then and then there was like a good amount of time since meeting him till I actually got signed. Like I ended up going to LA and writing a bunch of music that was very different from like what I even thought I was gonna put out. And then I guess the label heard that and then they decided that they wanted to like actually work together. Mm -hmm. And were you already deciding that you wanted to sign with a record label at that point? Or was it just kind of like they're the first ones to approach that. It's, it's weird because like no one's story is the same, you know, every, there, and I'm realizing now especially that there's no one right way to do something. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't like, I wasn't being shocked to labels, I wasn't doing any of that, like I was just writing songs. I wasn't even like necessarily thinking about signing to a label, I just wanted to create music that felt like it represented me. Ezzy, like something I actually wanted to put out um, and it just that opportunity just happened and it just happened to like make sense with the time for me um, so yeah it wasn't something I expected I definitely wasn't something I like was going and like seeking out at, at the time are you still with them <laughs> okay so how long has it been now I signed five towns like about um, a year and a half ago. Actually, no, like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I signed like officially two years ago. And so weird. I guess you haven't really been with another label, so you can't really compare what it's like to be with like a music music label and like a fashion music yeah. label. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's different. I think like, um, yeah, I really have nothing to compare it to. Um, it's cool because they like they give me a lot of creative control over what I do. It's definitely all the ideas are coming from me, and everyone's very supportive of me and like runs with my ideas. And they, so I'm really grateful for that. I know with major labels, like as a developing artist, that system isn't always like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful to like have been able to work with them so far. And was it? In the onset that you started writing about your depression or anxiety, or was that something that took time for you to be able to be more open about? It took a it took time. Like, it's not something I was ever open about as a kid. Like, I just my family's very private. Like, a lot of I wasn't. I just I feel like everyone is really private, and especially the in the town I grew up in. Everything felt like it was behind like you know closed doors, and I. I guess I was writing so often and I was in LA and like I had nothing else to do except like express myself and that was the only thing I could talk about and then I ended up writing a whole EP about that and then like it's become something I talk about really openly now and it's a lot easier to talk about now but at the time I was like what am I doing like this, I feel like kind of weird talking about this like I feel like I'm almost exposing myself too much but I'm really glad I have because just like the conversations I've been, been able to have with people and like people who've listened to my music or just I guess noticed that I was talking about that like have been so amazing like I, I don't regret talking about it at all. Mm -hmm. And how did your parents find out about your depression? I mean I think it's like your parents know I mean it's also genetic like mm -hmm. I think it's there's a con I think it's um in like foreign, like my parents are from Russia and I think it's almost, I don't wanna like generalize because everyone's experience is different, but what I found from my experience is that a lot of other like foreign cultures, like my parents, like, and maybe it's like an age thing and like for my parents' generation, don't necessarily like, like calling something like, um, you know, they don't like addressing like yeah, depression and anxiety. Asia also, yeah. yeah. Or like they don't like addressing it or like they don't like to say therapy because it's like it just it's so stigmatized and I think like me just learning and like teaching myself to like destigmatize it just for myself so I could like be cool with who I am and like talk about it with my friends made me realize that like 
everyone's going through the same shit and like for some reason we're not communicating and we're not expressing ourselves and it's like everyone is just quietly suffering through these like experiences instead of just opening up about it um, but I think that my parents because that was the question um, I think they always knew they just didn't know what to call it mm -hmm. you know they'd be like okay you're sad like but they're parents they love you they want to like help you but sometimes it's just like a, of a different mindset they don't know like they don't know the best way always mm -hmm. what advice do you have for someone who's going through depression it's so hard to give advice because like I am changed like I'm a human being too like I'll go through these like I'll go through like certain experiences where I'm like I figured it out <laughs> like I'll tweet about it and be like this is the answer and then like a week later I'll contradict myself and because I just feel completely differently I think anything so the stuff that I'm working on um, just like in terms of my mental health is just focusing on self-care it's much easier said than done but like really taking the time to focus on yourself and like listen to yourself um, and just try to be as aware of how you feel as pos like as much as possible and just like checking in mm -hmm. I mean that's what I'm doing I everyone's experience is so different how do you deal with your anxiety now um how do I deal with my anxiety? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> I mean, I create, I make music, I hang out with friends. Um, I'll like work out or I'll do something nice for myself. Like, I'll take a bath. There's so many things you could do to help yourself. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> How do you think your music has changed compared to the early songs you made? Um, the early stuff is actually, the music I'm working on right now is very different. Um, I think the early stuff, I was just, I was learning about telling my story and like, I was just figuring out, I was almost focusing more on just being a songwriter rather than like, really taking into account like the full picture of like what it means to be an artist and I think this past year of me releasing music like was my I learned a lot um, just about how the process works and the kind of artist that like I want to be in the world and like what I want to put out into the world so the stuff now yeah it's really different I love it I'm so mm -hmm. excited about it oh, same. Um, it's like yeah it's just more alternative like they're more R&B and soul influences I'm actually still figuring it out I'm still fleshing out like exactly what the sound is gonna be but um, I'm also speaking I think my songwriting just got a lot better too um, so I've learned how to actually express what I want to say in a I don't know mm -hmm. like a better way or <laughs> more experienced way mm -hmm. Other than what we touched upon previously, how do you think you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? I've learned how to stand up for myself, how to really listen to myself. I'm still, you know, I'm still growing. I, it's so weird, like, maybe it's just this time in our lives, but I really, every week I feel like a new person. Every month I feel like I don't Same. even <laughs> recognize myself. Yeah. Um, but who I am now to like who I was maybe two months ago is taking a lot less shit from people right now. <laughs> a lot less shit. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What does love mean to you? Uh, love means just like home and acceptance. Yeah. Last question. What do you remembered for? I know you, you asked this question yeah. and like I was thinking about that on the way here. I was like, I really hope because I don't know. Like I was thinking about this earlier. I'm like, what do I want to be remembered for? Um I think I'm still figuring that out. I think right now, like I'm just I just wanna make music that represents me and like that touches people. I wanna do something new. I wanna try I wanna I wanna like I think just doing something different, taking chances, 
if someone was like, oh yeah, she always like, she always did, some, she always did her own thing. Like, I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool with remember, being remembered for that. Yeah, I love yeah. that. This is awesome. Okay, Thank you so cool. much. Thank you. Oh, bye guys. Bye.